Eric, I know clutch games, the familiar theme of the season. You've told us all along how those moments help prepare for these moments. Can you talk about your team's poise and moxie down the strength in getting it done to go up 2-0? Yeah, I, I think probably um, all those games, um, more than anything, it just uh, makes you realize how tough it is. Uh, it, it really is tough. Um, you know, to win, it's even tougher to win in the playoffs. Uh, and then you're playing against a, a very good basketball team in Boston. Uh, you know, we've, we've just had a lot of uh, reps on on learning how to deal with a lot of different emotions. I mean, there were, there were so many different uh, ebbs and flows of, of that game. Um, but, you know, you, you start to wrap your mind around that it's going to be a long game, 48 minutes, and you got to win skirmishes. Um, you know, we had to battle through deficits in both halves. Uh, but we showed that grit and perseverance uh, to be able to hang in there and then, you know, make some plays. And defensively, you know, in the second quarter, uh, we're really good, you know, to, to get back into the game, you know, and then same thing in the, in, the, in the second half. And then Jimmy and Bam just really anchored us offensively. Um, you know, it's just great, uh, you know, when your two best players can lead you and, you have a place where the ball can go and everybody else is just playing off of uh, those guys. But they, they also hit some some very timely big shots uh, in that fourth quarter. What did you think of not just his entire game, but once they put Rob on Caleb, his response to that? Yeah, it, uh, they did it last year. So he it's almost like he's had 12 months to prepare for this. Um, you know, he, he has a lot of pride. You know, he, does, he doesn't like being dis... You know, whatever you know um but he, he's a he's an important playmaker for us you know space in the floor he's just he's not your traditional um three and d guy he, he's a little bit unconventional out of the box so he, he can do a lot of different things um but uh yeah that's part of it like if they're going to you know play way off of him you know he'd be he's uh now had you know, a lot of months of, of knocking down those those kind of shots, but also off the dribble, making plays, and just those timely winning plays. Um, you know, in the second quarter, really, the, the they made a big-time push, and Caleb was the one, uh, his energy, his offense, his defensive efforts really just kind of kept us, you know, in that, in that scrum. Jimmy and Bam are, are different off the court, but you've talked about how they're so similar on the court, just in their on-court personas. What, what makes them so so unique as that? That, that competitive league? spirit, the competitive will. You know, they 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 compete to win, um, and they they understand they you have to do it on both ends of the court. Uh, both of them, you know, at some point probably guarded basically everybody on the floor. You know, at some point with the switches. Um, so they're they're going to burn a lot of calories on that end, but then they have this shoulder, you know, massive responsibilities for us on the other end. Um, so we follow them. We follow them with their spirit, their competitive will. Um, you know, night in, night out. Spo, you've talked for years about the will you've got to have to succeed in the postseason. Why is the belief within this group? so strong that you guys will find a way no matter the circumstances feels like this has just been our existence all all year long i guess nobody was really paying attention you know but but we were in every single game was it, it felt like for weeks on end every game was ending on the last second shot <laughs> whether we were shooting or the other team was shooting it um so you you develop some some grit you know from that and whether it turns into confidence or not, sometimes you don't have the confidence, but you, at least you have that experience of going through stuff and you, you understand how tough it is. What was going through your head when you saw Jimmy and Grant face to face like that? Mike, is it fair to say you were not displeased? <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I can see where you're going. Look, I, I love that. Uh, that uh, gnarly version of, of Jimmy, but you, you get that r regardless. Uh, I just think people now are, are paying a lot more attention, you know, to him now. You know, we've won some games in the postseason, um, you know, the last few years. Jimmy is, is a uh, just a, a, a real competitor. But, but playing that way, 
you guys have played close games for like a decade. Um, is there a comfort when the game is like that that you feel? For a whole decade, we're going <laughs> to go. It's uh, been years. You guys to, play close games every year. Like um, many of them. That sounds like it's almost an indictment on the style of play, like in the mud. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I, um, no, I, I think the only thing that's relevant is, is this year. Well, uh, this group has been together for a while, so there, there's, there's some collective experiences together. But uh, certainly this year was really unique for, for all of us. And, and there's a beauty in the struggle. Uh, there's a beauty in that grind. Uh, and... Um, you know, we're privileged to be able to go through a, a unique regular season uh, like we have. Um, but we're in the midst of, of this right now. And, yes, we feel a certain way about getting these two games, but we're, we're well aware uh, of who they are, what they're capable of. Um, just in these first two games, you know, they've gone on big runs on us. Um, so we have to stay focused on the task at hand and, and get ready for a big battle in game three. Coach, um, game two against New York, I imagine you th knew you would be going to some zone just because Butler was out. Um, I wonder if, if this one, if you thought you'd be playing, had any idea that you'd be playing this much know. zone you know, when you, you play, When you compete against great teams, you know, very good teams like we're, we're facing in Boston, you, you just have to do whatever's necessary. Now, uh, it's not about the schematics or the X's and O's. You could invent a, a, a new defense. If you're not committed to doing tough things that's what this is about doing tough things like th these guys are not easy to defend you have to you have to be committed to doing uh you know the multiple efforts uh to contain to get to the three-point line to like uh contain their drives they do all of that and then they crash the glass um whether in the man or the zone uh um but our guys have, have kind of wrapped their minds around that, how tough it is in the, in the postseason. Uh, Eric over here, uh, you've obviously been asked a lot about the undrafted story and having so many players yeah, along those lines. Yeah, that's kind of played but, out. Well, well yeah. my, my they're question... They're not even like... That, that's so disrespectful to like <laughs> yeah. keep on talking about that way. Like Gabe has been with us. He's a veteran. Yes. He's a seasoned veteran. I have not even bothered to look at the playoff experience, but he's got as much playoff experience as anybody in, the, in this postseason he's been with us since the bubble like that that storyline is over these guys uh, uh, have proven themselves uh, as competitors and, and winning players um, maybe they feel a certain way about it but you know they have the full trust of uh, of everybody uh, in our locker room um, and this is just about the Heat versus Celtics right now. Well, my, my question along those lines is, what are the intangibles that those types of players have that you typically look for that maybe are showing up right now in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, you, you see it. It's, a, it's on display, you know, competitive will, competitive spirit, uh, you know, toughness, understanding how tough it is to win, you know, and, and there, there's a humility to that. Um, it's a tough balance to have that that razor's edge, but also have a humility, you know, and a respect for the opponent. You know, those guys have that for sure. Eric, obviously you count on Duncan's three-point shooting to help you, but he also was aggressive going to the basket and gave you sort of a spark at a bunch of different times. He's a guy who's been in, he's a guy who's been out, been spotted a little. Your thoughts on his overall effort tonight? Now, that's been two years of development, you know, uh, where the scouting report was to do everything and anything to get him off that three-point line. So he's been working on that diligently for two off-seasons, regular seasons, really working on his off-ball movement, more actions to the rim. You saw the back cut, uh, and then putting the ball on the floor. I mean, I, I can't even mention how many drives he's worked on during the off-season over and over and over, uh, and then still doing his normal shooting routine because that's what – that's what creates uh, the overreactions. Um, but that's a credit to, to his commitment to the player development. Caleb, sort of another game where another team plays the I dare Caleb game. Robert Williams guarding you, he's almost making you be part of the offense. How do, you, how, did you, how do you take that in general? How did you take that tonight? And that part of the fueling to what got you to a career playoff high? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, everybody's got a game plan and a scheme to follow, so... 
I get it. You know what I mean? When you're dealing with somebody as good as Jimmy and Bam, guys like that draw so much attention, you kind of have to pick your poison. And I'm just on the short end of the stick when it comes to that. Um, but, you know, I welcome that. And, you know, it's my job to continue to prove to people that that I can't be the guy to do that off of. And, you know, I got to not only with that, but that's just, you know, me doing my job and making, making creating space and making things easier on our uh, main guys. Caleb, on that same topic, it, this is not the first time teams have tried that with you, and they've been doing it for over a year. How is your experience with teams trying to put centers on you, and specifically Boston trying to do that to you? How, how has that kind of set you up for, for a night like tonight? Yeah, uh, I think automatically um, when we got – uh, through the second round, we matched up with Boston again. Um, I just knew from the jump, I automatically re-triggered my brain to last year during the playoffs, and I knew exactly um, how they were going to guard me. So I've been preparing myself the minute we uh, got, um, you know, we beat the Knicks, and we were preparing for uh, Boston. I just automatically started trying to re um, circuit my brain to, you know, the, the looks I would get and how guys are going to help off of me and <clears throat> just me preparing to be ready and confident and assertive. Understanding that Tatum is, is going to get his um, at certain points of the game, what, what do you feel like you guys have been doing uh, in the fourth quarter to kind of keep him quiet, to slow him down a bit in those moments? Uh, whatever we can, you know what I mean? He's a he's a force offensively, and, um, you know, he, he like we were saying with Jimmy, he draws so much attention. He's one of the best scorers in the league. So um, we just do, do anything that we can to throw bodies at him and give him different looks and different coverages and, you know, that's part of him being a great offensive player. He's going to find ways to score regardless. And, you know, I mean, he's done a, you know, a great job of getting other guys involved. So we just try to throw him different looks and, you know, and play, as, play him as best we can. Uh, the moment that Jimmy and Grant Williams kind of got into it, what, what were you guys thinking on the sideline at the time or on the floor at the time? And then what kind of lift did it provide you all? I mean, I knew it was going to be good for us. You know what I mean? I just, knowing Jimmy and at that point in the game is you kind of get them going and uh, you know we'll, we'll take mad jimmy at any time so uh um we just we i knew kind of that you could kind of see it kind of seeing it in his eyes that he was he was ready to go after that so you know he leaves we follow so you know we just he makes it easy on all of us so caleb up 2-0 now in this series heading back to miami what what do you tell each other in the locker room uh, job's not done. I mean, it, it, they're going to be two of the hardest games that we play so far coming up next at home, and we want to use the home court to our advantage. And and um, you know, we just we just understand the games are going to continue to get tougher, and they're going to come out you know firing even more than they did the last two games. And we just got to compete as if uh, we're not up two. You know what I mean? We just got to continue to have that mindset that we you know that we're down to or or whatever it is to, to keep us assertive and um, confident. So. We just, um, it's not over till, you know what I mean, until we get to four. Thank you, Caleb. Caleb, do you guys take pride in doing what you're doing as an eighth seed, or at this point, you don't even consider your, yourself an eighth seed? I don't think we've ever considered ourselves an eighth seed. Obviously, we put ourselves in that position through the regular season, but, you know, we always knew what we were capable of as a team. And, uh, you know, we've always had confidence in each other and great chemistry throughout the team. So we just knew we just had to get here. And once we got here, you know, things would kind of play out um, in our favor just because, um, you know, like I said, with the chemistry and the fact that we were, we're a versatile team, we can really shoot the ball, score the ball. And, you know, and we got guys like Jimmy and Bam on the team. So we knew they were going to help us, um, definitely help us and put us in position to, to make a run. <laughs> Bam, how much of this is almost feels like more of the same? So many of these games during the regular season, finding a way to will to the finish. What's it like now when you get to a game like this, knowing that you can get it done because you've done it so many times, no matter the opponent or the venue? Like I said, you know, I say this countless times, just being in those situations 50-plus times during the regular season, you know, that, that just brings great experience for us. And... For us to be able to will out this win, you know, this is this is a good one for us. Bam, after you you saw some doubles last game, and you were able to make plays off of that. After that happened, were you expecting more single coverage in this game? And when you do get single coverage, do you feel an added weight to to make some plays and create some shots just for yourself? Uh, nah. You know, Spoke gave me, you know, ultimate clarity. Be you. 
Uh, you know, for me, that's, that's, that's simple enough. Uh, he wants me to be aggressive. He wants me to score. You know, and like I said before, before Cal was hating that one time. Before Cal was hating that one time, uh, I'm a great passer. Bam, obviously you know Grant and obviously Jimmy's your teammate, but what was your view of kind of that, that head-to-head confrontation between the two of them and how much do you think that fueled Jimmy going down the stretch? I mean, I feel like things like that always fuel Jimmy. You know, I feel like he starts it so it can it can get him more in the competition. And, I mean, you see down the stretch what he was doing. You were down 12 twice tonight. Um, so you talk about being able to thrive in these close games, but you had to get there first. Do you think that you are forcing the Celtics into the mistakes that are happening that allow you to get back into these games? Uh, I feel like we're forcing them into difficult shots. Uh, you know, trying to trying to make them turn the ball over. Uh, but, you know, the biggest thing for us, I feel like we're making shots. You know, uh, I don't know why we keep wanting to get down 12 every once in a while, but <clears throat> it seemed like guys just, you know, stop playing and just really want to hoop. And uh, we will win. Uh, we will that way back from 12 down twice and got the W. Bam, this is nothing new for Caleb, but what did you think of his response to Boston putting Rob on him? Uh, one thing Caleb told me was this not last year. And uh, that really resonated with me because they did the same thing to him last year. And I felt like he felt like it was disrespectful. Anybody else? Yeah, Jimmy, you That's it. Black Lives Matter, people. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Duncan, let's go through some of these things that were so impactful that you were a part of. First of all, you gave him a little okie doke. That back door was open, baby. You were, my mama used to say in or out. You, you left that door open. It was beautiful, huh? Uh, yeah, shout out to Ed Monix, uh, Flynn Tropics, loves a backdoor cut. But uh, yeah, man, you know, when they guard us like that, top side, um, you know, it's important to, to make them pay and not just concede to the coverage and just be difficult to guard in that sense. And then you change it up and go back to the old stuff, splashing it down from the edges. It's nice to be able to have that type of impact, I'm sure, which helps the entire offense. Yeah, you know, uh, they make it difficult. You know, they do a pretty good job guarding the three-point line, but just trying to be persistent. Um, hard to guard and, and, you know, set screens, slip out of screens, do all sorts of different stuff just to try to free some space. What was it about ending halves right tonight? It, it happened in the second quarter, and obviously the way you guys ended the game at the end, just reading it a little bit in the first and third and then applying what you learned? I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, we talk a lot about skirmishes. You know, the game is going to have different sets of skirmishes, and, uh, you know, we try to take advantage particularly of those, those moments, you know, the end halves. Those can be big momentum swinging uh, stretches. So Jimmy was kind enough to swing by here for a cameo. I mean, well, we'll, we'll work on some editing, I'm sure, before that hits air. But his impact tonight was obviously everywhere. And then the energy surge you get when the man goes head-to-head, -head, literally, with Grant Williams, had to be a little surge provider. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a bad man right there, Jimmy. Uh, he's just on another level right now. And um, happy he's wearing our jersey and happy he's, he's on our team. And... Just try to, you know, take advantage of it when someone's playing like that. You know, just ride coattails, do what you can to, to help them. This first time in the postseason, you'll go home up 2-0. You guys have been perfect at home. You don't have to be shy about that. You've developed something there that's confident, building and consistently there for you. I know it doesn't guarantee what's going to happen on Sunday, but your expectations of how that place is going to rock. Yeah, we're excited to get back. Um, the energy and boost we've gotten from the fans has been amazing this postseason. And, uh, you know, we played some of our best basketball there. You know, we can do it in both places on the road or at home, but we'd love playing at home. We appreciate the time. Congratulations on coming back to New England and laying it down. My man, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. We appreciate you. Let's go back to the studio. I mean, after last game when they, you saw some doubles and you were able to make plays off those doubles tonight, did you, when did you get the sense that they weren't going to send as much help? And did you see that as an opportunity to create more shots for yourself? Yes. Uh, I was trying to play the right way the entire game. And then I, I feel like in the fourth, it's all about getting a bucket, um, whether you're taking a contested shot, a wide open shot. It's all about getting shots on goal. 
and I can only tell y'all so many times how much confidence that my teammates put in me, uh, the coaching staff put in me to just go out there and hoop, play carefree, and um, as we like to say in our locker room, take us there. Jimmy, before you got up here, we've been talking about Grant Williams and what happened there in the fourth quarter. And Bam even suggested that you occasionally start things like that to just kind of get yourself going. Can you tell us what happened in, in the moment there and did it fuel you down the stretch? Yes, it did. Um, but that's just competition at its finest. Um, he hit a big shot, um, started talking to me. I like that. I'm, I'm all for that. Um, it, it makes me um, key in a lot more. And it, it pushes that will that I have to win a lot more. And um, it makes me smile. It, it does. When, when people talk to me, I'm like, okay, I know I'm, I'm a decent player if you want to talk to me out of everybody that you can talk to. But um, I don't know. It's just, it's just competition. I, I, I do respect him, though. He, he's a big part of what they try to do. He switches. He can shoot the ball. Um, I just don't know if um, I'm the best person to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jimmy, Grant wasn't the answer, was he, to Hell the Jimmy no. Butler problem? Mm-mm. He wasn't. That's what that, the end of that post game was about? That's what you're referencing? That's not what it's about. Um, but I don't know. I, I think so many guys played well for us tonight. You know, Caleb was, was huge, <laughs> as was Bam. Um, and I just think we played high energy. And everybody's going to focus in on that, but that's for sure not the reason why we won the game. I think what Caleb did tonight was incredible in keeping us in the game. Um, you, you, you can't leave him. He's on everybody's scout report. He does everything that you ask him to do. And then Bam was Bam, rebounding, um, passing the ball, scoring the ball. And then um, I made some shots late. That's the ball game. One last one. Can you tell us about the song you were listening to on the way in here? Uh, Morgan Wallen, um, Somebody's Problem. It's a... Uh, to hit in the locker room right now. But honestly speaking, I think I'm kind of like the, the DJ, so I get to pick and choose what we listen to. If it's not him, it's Dermot Kennedy. Uh, it might be some gospel in there. Who knows? Jimmy, fourth quarter execution, both here in game two and also in, in game one, they seem to be very much out of rhythm. You're disrupting them, turning the ball over. You guys seem pretty confident and comfortable in the offensive end. What's keyed to both of those uh, elements? Honestly, they, they just missed some shots. That's that's part of the game. Um, I think our our game plan is kind of simple in the fourth quarter, if I'm being brutally honest. It's kind of like uh, give me the ball to move, and I gotta, I'm got tasked with making the right play. Uh, sometimes it's shoot the ball. Most of the time it's shoot the ball, and a lot of times it's pass the ball to the open guy. Um, and I pride myself on finding that open guy. I really do. Uh, I want to get all my teammates involved. And I've never been a guy to say that the player that I am today isn't because of my teammates. It's always because of them. They always make shots. It makes my job so much easier. If I get beat on defense, somebody's always there. Um, I have so much faith in this group of guys that we have. And I've said it all year long. Um, We're going to ride with one another to the wheels fall off. Do you feel like because of that, you have kind of a mental edge on them at this point? I don't think so. I just think we're so worried about us as a team, us as a unit, that we don't, it's not like we don't focus on them, because we do. You know, we talk about everything that they do. But at the end of the day, we have to be the best version of ourselves. We have to believe in one another. We got to go out there and compete together, um, withstand the runs that they will go on, and um, be able to make runs of our own. And at the end of the day, we're going to always live with the result because we did it together. Jimmy, you talked through the years here about the confidence everybody pours into you and everybody pours into everyone else. Why is the belief so strong within that no matter what the situation is in a game that you guys will find a way to win? We, we see it every day in practice on off days. Guys are constantly working on our game. Guys are constantly studying film. Um, and, and guys just want to win. At the end of the day, that's, that's all anybody wants on this roster. If you ask them to do something, as long as it's for winning, they're going to do it. Um, nobody on this roster is dumb, so they can tell whenever it's about winning and whenever you're telling them something because the end goal is winning. And then more than anything, 
like I always say, we just, man, we in this thing together. We, we, we love it that way, and um, we'll continue to play that way and have fun while we're doing it. Jimmy, you guys finished seventh record in the East, number eight seed, but there's been that sort of will all along. Did you expect this? Did you, when that Chicago Didn't game was over? Already? Yeah, but just when you, when you reach a point like this now, at 2 0 in this series, maybe other people are talking about a surprise in the series. Your thought on that? We don't care. We never have. We never will. Um, we know what we're capable of. Um, we're going to be in this thing to the end together. Good, bad, indifferent. We are who we are. We are where we are. And we're going to continue to fight together. This group's been exceptional in focusing, and I know the job's not done yet. But how gratifying coming to the Garden and getting two in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, getting a win on the road in the playoffs is tough. And to get two is even tougher. So uh, we're glad to start the series this way and uh, take it back home. When you go to the fourth quarter, Boston came out, was really aggressive on the first couple possessions to the rim, and then you guys respond with a 36-point fourth quarter. What was the conversations that really shifted the final frame? Yeah, I mean, we knew they'd be aggressive, but we knew we had to step up and make plays, especially defensively. Uh, trust each other offensively and get the ball where it needed to go, and, uh, you know, guys made shots. You know, there's a lot of pressure and tension in those tight moments, but there was a point where uh, a magnet went between Jimmy and Grant Williams' head. What were you guys thinking in that moment um, with about three or four minutes left in the game? Though that's, that's when we're at our best, you know, the situations like that, when things get intense in that manner. So, um, you know, I think we just took our game to a level at that point. This team really seems to have an unshakable belief in the ability to grind out these games. Where does that come from? All the work that we put in. The guys put in work individually. We put in work as a team. We know we know one, each other, know one another. We trust each other. And we're just going to take this as far as we can. Last one, just looking ahead. How exciting is it thinking of going back home to the Kaseya up to? Yeah, it's great. I mean, you got to go back, take care of business there.